John chapter one, I'll start in verse one. Um, I want to focus on uh, some other parts just ahead, but I'll, I'll just read from the beginning. Um, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Excuse me. There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. Verse 9. There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own, who were his own did not receive him. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So um, verse 9, uh, there was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. Um, that tells us that all of us have enough um, knowledge of God to be responsible for ourselves. So if we reject him, um, then we're responsible. Um, he came to his own and those who were his own did not receive him, verse 11. So he walked among his own people and nearly all of them except 11 rejected him and then verse 12 but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of god so not everybody but as many as received him even to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god so that verse 13 he's talking about uh being born again and then um let's go back to acts and we'll look at chapter four. <laughs> so we're back to Peter and John. Um, they've been arrested and they're standing in the court before the high priest, before the Sanhedrin. And I'll start in verse eight. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, because they, heal, they healed the man, as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. Verse 11, he is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders but which became the chief cornerstone. And then verse 12, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. So that's the, the parallel passage to, uh, to John 1. As many as believed in him, um, he gave the right uh, to become children of God, even those who believed in his name. And again, not a, not a superficial belief, not um, not a, a belief of, of good feelings about about Jesus or who He is, but um, a complete uh, transformation, believing uh, with the, with the heart and the mind, uh, enabled by the Holy Spirit of God, is the belief that they're referring to in these passages. You know, Lauren, you, you just said that you know we have enough light to understand it and and uh, do what's right. <clears throat> But in John uh, 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, and that's what I share with, with people. And I shared, we, Kelly and I had a chance to uh, share our testimony again this last Sunday with uh, the marriage enrichment group that we, uh, our pastors teaching and we co-facilitated with them. And, I, and that's what I said. I said, how do I not love a God and do what he's told me to do when I read it in the word of God and follow him 
when he's given everything back to me that I that I possibly had lost. Yeah. So how do I not follow a God that's restored everything back to me? And and it's it's because I've seen the miracles that he's done in my life, and that's why I I just do what I do for him. You know, it's it's not me. It's no longer me who lives, but a Christ that lives in me. Amen. Right. So it's, can I suggest something though? That um, yeah. with with the Holy Spirit um, in your heart, living in you, um, yeah. even if many of those things had not been restored back to you, with the Holy Spirit inside you, you would still want to follow him and you would still want to give him glory. True, true. But he, but I think he's, he's shown me so quickly that, you know, because he knows everything. And that, and that's how that what I share with people. I mean, he's he's all knowing. So when he did that, he knew what I was going to do and how I was going to follow up, and how. And that's why I say when when he kept asking for me and going, "Rude, where are you? Where are you?" Because I know when you come, who's going to come behind you? Who's going to come after you? You know, because so many people have come to know the Lord through Kelly and I, and through my walk and my testimonies. And so yeah, so that's why. I, I see him in my life. So that's, yeah. So that's why I say that, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments, you know? Right. And I know for all six of us here, we love him like that. That's why we do that. We keep his command. Yeah. Matthew seven. Um, I think it's, I think it's 22 um, says that, um, that those who um, do the will of my father who's in heaven will enter, you know, well, it's it's like the um, it's like the parable um, in Matthew, um, the parable of the treasure. So the so a man found a treasure in a field and he sold everything he had, and it's 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 very understated, right? He sold everything he had just to have it, you know, to get the treasure. Um, and you're talking about people not having an excuse. Um, back in Romans one eighteen, um, it says, "For the wrath of God is revealed." Uh, from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because that which is known about god is evident within them mm. it's, that's our conscience right for god made it evident to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made so they are without excuse so so he says twice that they're without excuse yeah. um and then really quickly, and then I'll be quiet. I'm just going to tie something into that because you mentioned how people will say, well, what about what about these people over here who haven't heard the gospel? And how is that fair? Right. That's usually the question. Well, right. how is that fair? Because they haven't heard it or whatever. And um, when my daughters ask me that um, and that I think that's a natural thing, right, for people to ask. But when they ask me, I said, don't worry about them. Worry about you who have heard it. You've heard it. So worry about that. But listen to this. Listen to Romans eleven thirty three. Do do we have a right to question God? No, we don't. But listen to Romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and unfathomable His ways. And I like the King James right there because it says His ways are past finding out. And it to me that's more that's more clear cut. God's ways are past finding out. For who, who has known the mind of the Lord, or who became his counselor, or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? That's a good one. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. And verse 36 should be the mantra of every believer. Yeah. 